We use the term bandwidth a lot within the AV industry, especially when describing video or audio data streams. But what exactly is bandwidth? This course will explain bandwidth in more detail and show you a smarter way to calculate video bandwidth requirements across your network. When a network switch is described as being a 10 gigabit switch, it means that each port is able to send or egress and receive or ingress a maximum of 10 gigabits of data per second. This isn't bandwidth. Bandwidth is the amount of data actually being sent or received across a physical connection at any one time. This is the first key point to bear in mind. Ethernet is fully bidirectional. Data can be received and sent simultaneously. However, video data only actually consumes bandwidth in one direction. For example, the ingress of a switch port could be consuming 6 gigabits of video data, but the egress of that port could be tiny because video data is not being sent back out. This chart shows the amount of bandwidth which would be consumed for each of these common video resolutions without any codecs being applied. Calculating the bandwidth requirement is a simple mathematic calculation. If we multiply the image size in pixels together and then multiply that value by the amount of frames being displayed each second, then further multiply that total by the amount of bits used for each individual pixel, we get, well, a huge number. And this number equates to the amount of bits which would be sent and received across a network, or bandwidth. This is a useful chart because it also gives you various bandwidth values for streams which have had chroma subsampling applied. You can download it within the documents section of this course for easy reference. And if you're unsure about chroma subsampling or color depth, head over to the video basics category here in Academy to learn all about it. Right, let's get back to bandwidth. Now we know how to calculate the bandwidth of a given video stream. How can we put this information to good use? Managing bandwidth across a single switch is easy. Switches are designed to be non-blocking. In other words, they're designed to be able to allow every port to operate at maximum bandwidth simultaneously. So, the only consideration is whether any single stream overflows a single link. SDVOE is designed to always fit within 9 gigabits, so there's never any overflow on a single switch. But what happens when you need to add more switches? To answer that question, let's look at the matrix switch. If an extra matrix switch had to be added to expand a system, each video source and display would need an extra cable to allow those video streams to be sent. Simple really, just add an extra cable per video stream. You could do exactly this within an SDVoE design. In other words, by connecting one port link per video stream, you will guarantee enough bandwidth to carry whatever video stream is being sent. However, while this idea would work, it isn't the smartest design strategy. Unlike a matrix switch which is sending a full video stream over a single cable, in networking, video is turned into data packets. And this means it's quite possible to send multiple video streams over a single connection. It all depends on how much bandwidth is required. If we look at our chart, we can see how much bandwidth each stream will consume, allowing you to calculate how many ports you need to use as trunk links between switches, which will then send multiple video streams of different resolutions across them. 
There are some further networking considerations to bear in mind when designing a network topology like this. Simply connecting these links together will not work. We have to tell the switches how we want these links to behave in order to successfully pass multicast video packets across them. And you'll find out more information about these rules here on the SDVOE Academy.